You're very welcome folks to another live stream here on this lovely Sunday afternoon just after midday on the 13th of June 2021 and you're all very very welcome to this stream where I'm here to help you achieve your driving goals to help you understand the driving test process and to assist you in passing that test so you can move on with the next stage of your life if you have any questions about driving any questions about learning the test anything at all let me know now in the comments section and I'll get round to your comment I'll answer your comment in chronological order um, as I as the stream proceeds if you've any more detailed questions any more um, kind of complicated questions that require teasing out then email me daintai at gmail.com that's Dane as in the great Dane but you can just call me Dane uh, Wojciech, I knew you'd be first in Wojciech. I said to myself, I was I was going for a walk there, um, but just a twenty minute walk before I came along, and I was just thinking about what I was going to say, and I said to myself, I bet you any money, uh, Wojciech Vlobel is going to be the first man in, and Wojciech, Jing Dobre, good good day to you, good morning, uh, and it's good to have you here. Uh, Wojciech is probably one of the more regular viewers of these live streams i just i said i just i just knew this guy be first in Wojciech, mi wego dunya he'll know what that means mi wego dunya uh anybody who speaks any irish as well get them in as well um i'm an irish speaker so kid me the falche oh sorry mar tatwit frassel on show august uh banati so yeah any questions folks comment or email um just to go down through a few few quick announcements first I'm going to tell you a quick story as well that something happened to me in my first few weeks as a driving instructor in 2008 I'll be going through this driving test report sheet got some good feedback from a lady who unfortunately failed and of course we'll be going through the signs as well some good signs there one or two signs are the same as last week but that's no harm you know that they're, they're they're it's good to know them all and I, I try and have the more complicated or uh, complicated is the wrong word but more challenging signs up there anyway so anyway, as I said, get your comments in if you have any questions, if you have any concerns, or email me daintai at gmail.com if you would like me to look over your driving test report sheet. I will respond and I'll give you detailed feedback on what happened, what I think happened. But if you are sending me your driving test report sheet, folks, please give me some information. Like, let me know where, what you think went wrong and let me know what the tester said because, you know, knowledge is power. If you do want to apply for your driving test, the, in the white writing there myroadsafety.ie that is the only place to do it okay the RSA will email you back when they have um, some test dates and they'll invite you to take one of the test dates but there's not much point in constantly checking in they say and seeing if there's any availability they will get back to you in due course ndls.ie in the blue there for any driver licensing questions if you have any concerns about your learner permit your driver license uh, exchanging foreign license all that kind of stuff check out that great website there www.ndls.ie uh, you'll find all the information you want there including booking your time slot if you do wish to um, apply for a learner permit or license in the yellow theory test.ie that's the only place to book your driver theory test don't go through any external places or external sites if you're booking a driving test or a theory test theory test.ie that's where you book your theory test they're starting to come back on board now and uh, theory tests and i'll explain a little bit more about that and you can buy some revision material there on theory test.ie so a couple of comments there just after voice check we have vivek uh kalarju hi dan good morning good morning or good afternoon to you vivek thanks for being here any questions let me know shane grant hello to you shane roddy Rodi Musa, hey, good morning. What is the easy way to get the <laughs> the easiest way to get the driver theory test? Well, the easiest way to get the driver theory test is to apply for it and study for it and revise and do your best on it. Um, the, you can apply on theorytest.ie. Roddy, since you asked that question, I'll just I'll just get straight to what just the updates. I think I said it last week as well, but just on the driver because I know they're 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 starting back up the driver theory test now. So let me just see here to make sure I have all the correct information. I'm not missing anything. So since Roddy asked, I'm just going to get go straight to that. So there's approximately one hundred and twenty thousand on the waiting list to do a theory test, but that is going to come down pretty quick because they are increasing the capacity. Okay, so it will go up to about twenty five thousand a month. 
um, extra tests. Uh, so that that'll be sorry, I don't mean extra tests. Their capacity will be twenty five thousand a month, and that's hoped to increase to fifty um, thousand a month as well, along with some online theory tests as well, which are coming on on a coming on stream on a pilot basis first come first served at a rate of about four thousand a month so it's first come first served there so the theory tests are back uh, it will take a little bit of time to get through it but they will get there so that was M roddy moose's comment there and i'll come back to the rest of the comments like n rose will be next there okay so i just want to get my few little bits out of the way here first then i'm going to be talking about the uh, driving test report sheet and all that kind of stuff um yeah if you know of anybody learning to drive anybody doing a test don't be afraid to give this live stream um, a bit of a share and hit that like button if you like what you see and if you think that these videos will help friends or family let them know and hopefully they can get some benefit out of out of this out of these videos as well um so let's see then um yeah when i was when i started as a driving instructor it was about 2008 um, it was late 2007, early 2008. I was looking for something, uh, something different, a change. I was in a job in sales at the time, and very early, very very early in my career as a driving instructor, something happened that kind of shaped me, I think, and that made me do what I'm doing right here, right now with you. So I'm going to tell you a short story without going on too much about it. Um, I was in the test centre in Wexford at the time. I think it was autumn 2008. I wasn't too long into the job. I remember it was a place called the Quality Hotel in Wexford Town. It's now called the Maldron Hotel, and it was a temporary test centre that was set up. And I was speaking to an older driving instructor there, who I had spoken to a few other times, and he seemed pretty sound. And but looking back now, he was always a little bit standoffish with me. He was always a little bit, you know, wasn't really engaging with me. I, I think I was probably a bit over friendly, over enthusiastic. Um, but anyway, it turns out that I was just chatting to him, uh, it was a bit of small talk, and I could see him looking for something, and I said, what, what, what's up, what are you looking for? And he turns out he had lost his um, contact lens, so there I was helping him try to find his contact lens on the ground somewhere outside the Modern Hotel in Wexford. And as I had done with a few other instructors, older instructors previously, because I was young and inexperienced and I was hungry for information, I asked him, so what way do you... Um, advise your learners to do the reverse around the corner so as soon as I asked him that question it was like pressing the nuclear button because he turned like that and he said to me what what do you mean what do you mean uh, if you don't know how to be um, teaching people how to do reverse around the corner you shouldn't be in this job I, it's not my job to tell you what to do and I knew straight away there and then that this guy you, you're dealing with a computer that's shutting down I immediately walked away. I did say, like, listen, I won't mention his name now, but um, listen, so-and-so, I'm only exchanging information here. I'm not trying to offend you. I'm not trying to uh, upset you or anything like that. Uh, if that's the way you want to be, and if that's the way you want to uh, conduct things, that's fine. And I walked away and never spoke to him since. So I think that instant probably had a bigger effect on me than I'd ever occurred to realize up until recently. And it kind of made me think that there's a lot of people out there who are insecure who are uh, nervous about new players he was probably just you know insecure about my presence there that I was making inroads in the driving instruct driving instruction in Wexford and I always said to myself if ever anybody came to me and asked me for any information whether it was a learner driver or fellow instructors I will always be as open as possible like recently there was a new instructor in Wexford there recently and she asked me to show her around and I said absolutely I'll meet you here and there and I'll show you all the places and I'll give you whatever advice I can because here's the thing folks at the end of the day information is knowledge and knowledge is power and I firmly believe that if you exchange and swap information both parties are going to learn there's no secrets here the information is there and if you exchange it in a friendly and conciliatory way then both parties can learn so what I want to say now is a big thank you to all you folks out there who are commenting. There's a lot of comments I'll get to now in a second who are sending me emails, who are sending me messages with uh, PayPal payments because you're giving me information. You're telling me about your experiences driving. You're telling me about what the driving tester said to you in Dublin or Galway or Donegal, whatever like that. That's very interesting for me and 
that sharing of information means that I can become a better person, I can become a better instructor, I can see things from your point of view, from the learner's perspective, and I can learn and read about things that the driving testers in Dublin or Galway or Limerick are doing, and not just in Wexford. So that's what I just wanted to share with you folks. Sharing information is good, and I, looking back on that incident now with that older instructor in Wexford, I suppose I kind of feel sorry for him in a way because he was probably just completely put out by me seemingly taking over his territory or something like that. Anyway, as I said, uh, sharing information is great because I learn just as much as you do. You might not realize that, but I do. Anyway, let's get back to some comments and then I'm going to go up for a few announcements, just a few updates on driving tests, theory tests, all that kind of stuff. So I think we had some uh, Rose person. Yes, a few comments here. N Rose, best way to learn pre-test questions, road signs and car bonnet parts. Yes, that's all good advice there by N Rose. I think it may be answering the question from Roddy, uh, is it about the theory test yet? Yeah, but it's like the old saying, the, the harder you work, the luckier you'll get. Read a, great, read a great quote a long time ago. In order to begin, just begin. Another great quote from Dr. Nazardan on My 600 Pound Life. Um, it's a program about overweight people in America. An overweight person asked him, but doctor, how do I stop overeating? How do I overcome all these, all these temptations? How do I stop putting all this food in my mouth? Doctor now says, don't do it. Sometimes his most simple advice is the best. Vivek, Kaliarju, Kaler, very welcome. Question, now a day's lot of roadworks are going on. Any tips to be followed during a roadworks on the road and roadwork temporary signal? Yes, indeed, Vivek. If, of course, it all depends on the roadworks and what's going on, but you have to take it as it comes. If you handle that well, and if you don't seize up and get all anxious and nervous and all that kind of stuff, the tester is going to be impressed with your ability to handle that situation, whether it's roadworks or whatever, um, flagmen, whatever it is. So, obviously, you're going to want to slow down, I'm guessing, if, if there's some kind of obstruction. Read the signs. It, it might just be a minor bit of roadworks. It could be a major bit of roadworks. But read the signs. Slow down. Drop a gear. You may have not expected to slow down so just make sure you're in first gear taking off because we're going to get to that now in a section on, on this sheet about how how important it is to be in first gear before you start off and remember just because there's roadworks it's not a disaster because i always say to people if there's roadworks you're probably going to be slowing down or stopping so that means you have more time to analyze the road ahead more time to think more time to see the pedestrians more time to look for hazards up ahead so just just slow down Take it one step at a time, watch your signs, obey the flag man, and then once it's over with, you're grand and the tester will be impressed at your ability to handle it. Like everything, it all depends on what's what's in front of you at the time. Sammy Ben, hello to you too. Shetty Sajit, hello Shetty, thank you for tuning in. Tylko Mik Mikolaj, Craft Play Games, uh, hello, I have my test on the 29th in Cork. Cork is a great place. I used, lived in Douglas for many years. Um, best of luck to you, Tal Talco, on your test in Cork. Uh, do you always have to look first in the mirrors before you indicate or move off and then blind spot? Uh, the, the main thing there, Tal Talco, is that you do your mirrors and your blind spot um, last when you're moving off because that way it's more up to date and the information is more fresh in your head. I always say to people, use the one, two, three rule for moving off from the parked position. So one gear stick, uh, number one. Two, you have two indicators, so indicate to the right. And three, three mirrors and a blind spot. Now, if you want to check your mirrors before you indicate and then check the mirrors again, you, I mean, you can do that. It's no big deal. Like I don't, I don't necessarily see the point of it, but I mean, you, you can, like especially the middle mirror, because you're probably, it's not going to take a huge effort to look at the middle mirror. But you can certainly check your mirrors before you indicate um, as well. But I always say, as long as you do the three mirrors and the blind spot last, it's more fresh and more up to date then. Craig, pierce them before we get to some announcements, and then I'll get to Shane Grant. 
Um, have a test tomorrow if I pass and apply for license in the NDLS tomorrow. Can I start driving alone tomorrow or do I have to wait? Craig, you'll have to wait until the end plates arrive. Or sorry, you'll have to wait until the uh, full license arrives in the post because although you're 95% of the way there, until they successfully process your application and make sure there's no mistakes in your application and to make sure that you didn't pay the tester a bribe, oh, 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 joking, sorry, bad joke. Um, but until they kind of dot all the I's and cross all the T's, you have to make sure that you wait until you get your full license before you drive alone. Now, having said that, if you are stopped by the guards and you are driving alone, which you shouldn't be yet, but if you are, I'm sure the guards will be flexible and they'll give you, you know, they'll cut you a bit of slack, okay? I'll get to Shane Grant now next. Let's talk about some announcements slash updates, folks. And then we'll get to the driving test report sheet. And anybody wants to have a go at these signs here, let me know what these, these are all very important signs because they're not immediately obvious as to what they are. So it's always good to know these signs. Let me know in the comment section if you'd like to have a go at these signs, all nine of them there. So updates and information on the driving, okay? So here we go. I had an email there recently from someone who had a full license from the USA. So there's no mutual swap between Ireland and the USA, at least not yet, for all the states in, in America. So she, this person can do a reduced form of EDT. First of all, she can drive on her full American license for the first year, um, but then after that, if she's staying here long term, she has to regularize the situation. And that means doing the theory test because she hasn't done a theory test before, so she has to do a theory test. Getting the learner permit. She won't have to um, get the full 12 lessons. She can get the reduced EDT of six lessons and she won't have to wait the required six months to do a test. She can do it before the six months. She has an exception because she has a full um, US license. But always remember, if somebody is getting the reduced EDT, and they eventually get an Irish learner permit as part of the process, then you must understand that Irish learner permit is takes precedence over the full license, whether it's an American full license or an Indian full license or whatever it is, okay? The learner's permit takes precedence, so you're not meant to be driving alone, you're meant to have the L plates up, all that kind of stuff, okay? Next one, someone asked me then recently in the emails about the learner permit um, going out of date. One person actually had an issue where he said his theory test was out of date. He was trying to apply for his test, but he only done the theory test two or three years ago. So he was, his learner permit was still in date, although it was coming to the end of his, his uh, term of the permit. But for some reason, the, the myroadsafety.ie uh, portal was saying that his theory test certificate was out of date. It was very confusing. I mean, I, I'm not really sure what was going on there. I, I, I said to him, you're going to have to get in, get in touch with the RSA about that or download a form and apply by post because you can download an application form and then apply by post if you're having any issues on myroadsafety.ie. If you're having any issues that can't be resolved online, I think, I think the only thing you can do then is download the, the application form, the paper form, print it out and send it off to County Mayo to apply then if you're coming up against a brick wall because believe me, I know it is very hard to get a human being on the phone from the RSA nowadays um, to answer any questions or concerns. Anyway, on learner permits, if your learner permit goes out of date by five years or more, you will have to go back to the start and do the theory test and do the 12 lessons and all that kind of stuff. If it's less than five years, four years and six months, you can just renew your permit then and you will not have to go through the theory test and all that kind of stuff again. But if your learner permit is out of date by five years or more, you are literally going back to the start. You have to start all the lessons again. You'll have to do the theory test again, the clock sets, okay? Clock reset, sorry. Um, as I was saying earlier on, um, the theory test, there is about 120,000 people on the waiting list for a, th for a theory test. That will come down pretty quick over the summer because they are increasing capacity up to 25,000 a month and eventually up to 50,000 a month later in the summer. And there is an online um, pilot scheme where people are permitted to do their theory test online. Uh, first come first serve on a basis of 4,000 a month, but that's gonna take a while to build up the capacity on that one as well, okay? The driving test, yes, there is um, a waiting list there for doing the driving test. There's a about 60, 62,000 
people on the waiting list to do a driving test. Quite high, probably not the highest it's been, but quite high nonetheless. Um, there are 40 um, testers being taken on this month, in the month of June. 40 new testers, so that's going to help bring the backlog down a bit. And the RSA have got permission for another 40 testers to be taken on later in the summer, maybe around July and August. So I'm very confident that the waiting list is going to go down as the summer progresses. In the summer, there will be lots of test centers will be doing tests on a Saturday. Lots of testers will be working later because of the longer evenings, the brighter evenings. You can get extra tests done um, in the summertime. So although it is high at 60, 62 odd thousand, probably a little bit more now, it is going to come down. So have patience, they, they will get to it. Because as long as I've been a driving instructor, there have been peaks and troughs with the, with the waiting list. And, you know, it's a bit like the housing crisis. It, it kind of seems like a feast or a famine, but eventually they'll, they'll, they'll get there. Um, a spokesperson from the RSA said he hopes to have the driving test waiting list down to 12 weeks by the end of the year. Um, whether that will happen or not, I'm not sure. Um, I'd say it might, to be honest with you. I'd say it will. Uh, but that's what he said, one of the spokespersons. 12 weeks by the end of the year, and if we got to that goal, I think we'd all be happy enough with that. Um, what if you drive on a comp on a learner permit, you drive on a company? So there are consequences if you drive on a company um, on a learner permit, um, and they are in possibly an 80 euro fine and two penalty points. So you want to be very, very, very careful, folks, because you know there, there is a reduced amount of penalty points when you're at, at that stage. So if you don't um, contest it, like if you get stopped by a guard and you are given two penalty points and an 80 euro fine, um, you just made 80 euro, yeah, then if you don't contest that, it'll be the two penalty points and 80 euro fine. But if you don't pay it within 28 days or you, you contest it, whatever like that, or it's not paid within a month, then it goes up to 120 euro fine and four penalty points. And you'd be surprised how quickly those penalty points will accrue and you could end up having a disqualification if you're not careful. So the rules are the rules. Don't drive unaccompanied. Make sure you have a fully licensed driver with you, someone who is a f who has a full license for two years or more N plate drivers, someone who has just passed and has their N plates, are not allowed to be accompanying drivers, okay? So be very careful with that, folks. Um, the Gardaí also have the option of impounding your vehicle, detaining your vehicle as well, and that could cost another 100 or 120 or whatever it is to get that free. So just be warned out there, um, you know, they are coming down on that a lot stronger now in the last couple of years than they were before. Um, also, a vehicle can be detained um, if an owner um, lets a learner driver drive it and the, and, the, and the owner of the vehicle knows that the learner driver doesn't have a full license or is not accompanied. So owners of cars be, be very wary too. Okay then, so let's see. They're the main announcements there anyway. Um, let's get to a few more comments now. And then I'm going to go straight into that driving test report. I'm going to tell you exactly what the tester said. I'm going to tell you what the learner said because she, she had a very good idea where she went wrong. It's not, it's not the worst report sheet. I mean, she, she only failed by a bit. The gears mainly and the hazards caught her out. And, and there's very clear guidance on that. So you can learn a lot from this. She's probably not actually not a bad driver. Um, just just a few just a few issues with the gears and, and uh, the hazards there. Anyway. But anyway, let's get to a few comments. I think Shane Grant was next. And then I'm going to get into this report sheet. And let me know, folks, if you want to have a go at these signs, let me know. I don't think anybody's had a go yet. I haven't got down to all the comments yet, of course. But uh, let's see if anybody knows what these signs are, okay? Because there's a nice collection of signs there. And they're not the most obvious, so it's good to know don't know these. I've got a little bit of a donation there. I'm not sure. I'll get down to it in a minute anyway. By the way, if anyone wants to make a voluntary donation by PayPal, links will be in the description. And in the first pin comment as well and thank you so much to anybody who has been donating who's sending voluntary donations really really appreciate it it's always nice to read a message as well with the donation so i know if you've passed the test or if you're still learning because i have another youtube channel as well and sometimes i'm not sure if the donations are from this uh youtube channel or from my other youtube channel which is called learn irish so let me know any but i'm really really delighted folks and the more support i get the more time i i'll commit to this channel 
Uh, thank you in advance for any donations. Anyway, Shane, let me see there now. Let's get to these comments here. Shane Grant, theory test on Friday, the 18th of June this week. Wish me luck. Shane, as Mara Darter Osquel get Gunyari Lat, as we say in Irish, good luck. The very best of luck to you. I would say you have a great chance if you're if you're using the official app and doing mock tests or if you have a if you have capacity to use a CD or DVD, there's a, there's a good CD ROM that you can get as well that will you can do mock theory tests. Um, and there's a there's a good website, mock theory test.ie. Um, from Kevin Horgan of Lady Bird Driving School. I'm, I'm, I think it's mocktheorytest.ie. Yeah, if you search that, he has a great website where you can do mock tests. And if you get the questions wrong, he'll explain. The website will explain the answer. So check that out too. Vivek Kaliarju again. I failed in the last test due to roadworks situation. Was the instructor was telling me to take a right turn, but the right lane was closed due to roadworks, so I needed to stay in the left slash straight lane when it was green i moved off from the line and waited for oncoming traffic to pass but all of a sudden it came to red in three seconds and i was stuck in the center yeah well from what you're telling me there vivek you had a moment's hesitation or a couple of moments hesitation and you got stuck in the center of a junction after the light turned red so you have to understand here that once you roll forward into the middle of the junction, once you roll forward into the middle, you have to clear it then. I know it feels like you're, you're breaking a red light or an amber light, but you're not because you're only finishing the turn that you started on a green light. If you stay in the center, what's going to happen is exactly what happened to you. You will fail. So sorry to hear that. It looks like um, it's like it was traffic lights. I, I don't know if you mentioned it was traffic lights, but it seemed to be traffic lights there because you said red light anyway. Uh, three seconds and it's stuck in the, yeah listen it's 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 unfortunate but if you get stuck in the middle if, if you get stuck in the middle of a box junction yellow box junction white box whatever box you're having yourself if you get stuck in the middle after the light subsequently goes amber and red having already rolled into the middle you are going to fail the test okay you have to clear the junction otherwise you could end up blocking it uh, for other road users a um, couple more comments then before we get into this report sheet um, let's see Talco Mikulaj again. Uh, any advice before my full test? Yes, Talco. I've lots and lots and lots of advice, and you're going to hear lots of it in this live stream. I'm going to be going through this report sheet here now very very soon. But I would say, listen, it's I I don't know. Like it's hard for me to say to you. I I don't know your strengths, your weaknesses. I would say to you, um, remember to breed. The nerves will usually evaporate once you get started. Don't drive too slow. If you have a good straight road, put the foot down and go for it. Um, having said that, if it's a tighter street with potholes, ramps and parked cars, then slow down. Make sure you have good clutch control. I'm going to be getting to that later I'm going to, when I'm talking about this reverse here. You, it's anybody doing their test, anybody out there doing a driving test, make sure you understand and you are very aware of what clutch control is, okay? Clutch control is like when you move the clutch in with your left foot gently up and down to make the slightest movements great for reversing around the corner great for the turnabout uh can be good for parking too and it is absolutely essential for creeping out at blind junctions so it all depends on where you're at Tylko. you can email me dainty at gmail.com if there's anything you're particularly worried about and the best luck to you in the driving test stay tuned though for lots more driving test tips and advice to help you and others in your driving test N Rose then is next, and I'll get to Adrian. Oh no, sorry, I was talking about the best way to learn pre-test questions, road signs, and car bonnet parts. Okay, well I've loads of videos on that. I mean, I've I've done videos on the bonnet, for example, in my own Opel Corsa and in a Volkswagen Golf. So just search that, search the Dane Thai, uh road signs, Dane Thai theory questions, Dane Thai car bonnet in YouTube, and you'll you'll get my uh, videos on that um i mean i mean not not to be smart like but maybe maybe get driving lessons like i mean i, I if i notice a sh i know that some driving instructors might be busy and all that but surely you might be able to get at least one or two driving lessons where they'll go through all that with you uh, i've loads of videos and all those things anyway if you have any other questions on that just email me at daintai at gmail.com and i can give you more specific advice adrian if you're worried about the roadworks, do a drive around the test area and be aware of them before you sit the test. Now, there's good advice from Adrian there. Um, 
it's always good to be aware of the area where you're doing the test anyway. So it gives you an idea of what's going on. So great advice there. Have a drive around the test area. Uh, I usually advise people to do a, a lesson anyway before the test. You know, I have a girl doing a test this week now at uh, 9.15 and we have a lesson at 8 o'clock in the morning. You know, so so like so that but in our lesson that we'll have on Wednesday at eight, we'll be able to have a, a good look around the area. Now Wexford is a big town, obviously. Like it's not like it's you know I'm not going to cover every single area, but we we're going to have a good idea of what's going on, um, by having a pretest lesson or a pretest drive at least if you're doing a test under you think there might be roadworks. Uh, Lewis Lewis Dolan, I have my test on Thursday in Galway. Galway, great place. I was up there a couple of years ago. Um, best of luck to you, Lewis. I uh, hope you do well. Let me know in if you have any questions. Comments get here if you have anything you want to go through. And Vivek, there get. Well, let me see. What, just get Vivek's comment there again before I get to the driving test report sheet. In the roundabout, either going straight or right. When should I use the blind spot when in the roundabout? Um, you it it does depend on the roundabout. To keep it simple, Vivek, I would say to you on the bigger roundabouts where you're spending longer on the roundabouts, like with two and maybe even three lanes, you're probably more likely to use the blind spot then. But you have to keep it quick. Don't do a blind spot like this and then turn back around. That's too long. Like you know, if you're going to do a blind spot on the roundabout, it should only be a confirmatory blind spot because the mirrors Checking the mirrors properly should give you the most information. So you just give it like mirrors, mirrors, then indicate a quick mirrors again, quick blind spot, and then go across. It has to be very, very quick because you cannot take your eyes off the road for too long. It all depends on the roundabout, but if you're changing lanes and if it's a bigger roundabout and you're spending longer on it, uh, probably might be no harm to use the blind spot. But I would say don't bother use the blind spot if there's a lot of stuff going on in front of you, like if there's cyclists or there's slow moving cars in front of you. Just rely on the mirrors then. It all depends on the situation you see. And Vivek again there, in the country road, I always see so much narrow roads, but max speed is 80. What is the recommended speed I should maintain even though the max is 80? Well, <clears throat> if you ever see that sign, it's a white sign, a white circular sign, and it has the black kind of uh, lines diagonally through it. That means the speed limit might be 80, but you have to drive at a speed that is sensible, and that reflects the conditions. So Vivek, in your situation, like everybody else, you have to drive at a speed that suits the conditions that you see in front of you. So if it's a fairly good open road, like country road or narrow road, you could get actually drive close to 70 or 75, maybe even touching 80, it depends, but you have to judge it based on what you see ahead of you. I cannot give you a simple one size fits all answer because there is none. If there's lots of bends and lots of humpback bridges, you want to be driving well below 80 kilometers then. And if it's a good, safe, open, wide road, you could drive closer to 80 then. You have to judge it. This is what this is why it's called a driving test, because you have to test yourself and the tester is testing you. You have to make a judgment based on what you see. So if the road is narrow, did you say there, obviously, some of narrow roads? Um, if it's narrow roads, I wouldn't be going anywhere near 80 kilometers then, okay? It all depends on what you see. Wojciech again. Well, I'll get to Wojciech's comment anyway because he has a go at the signs here. So let's see. Number one, Wojciech says no entry. That's correct. Number one there, folks, with the red sign with the white line going through it, no entry. Number two, dead end. That's correct. Dead end. Um, no true road, that is. Uh, three is sharp bend ahead. Absolutely correct. Sharp bend ahead. Now, if number three was colored blue, it might be a different sign. That's in a right turn ahead. But number three, sharp bend ahead. To the right number four Wojciech says two-way traffic yes two-way traffic it's orange so it refers to roadworks somebody asked about roadworks earlier on number four is two-way traffic in the roadworks number five is a clear way absolutely correct Wojciech five out of five so far number five is a clear way uh, no parking no stopping during the time shown number six road narrows from both sides absolutely road narrows from both sides number six it's a, it's a yellow sign which is a warning sign Number seven is a sharp corner to the right. Yes, absolutely. Number seven, sharp corner ahead. Again, if that was blue, it'd be different. It might be a right turn ahead, but it's yellow, which is warning. So make sure you know your colors. Yellow is warning, warning you of a dangerous corner ahead. Number eight is keep left. Yes, information sign there. Number eight, keep left. So there could be, if you see number eight there, there, there could be kind of like an island in the middle. Like an island is a raised curb, kind of like a footpath in between the roads, in between two lanes. So number eight is 
keep left of the island or just keep left of whatever's there and number nine is a hospital absolutely Wojciech well done Bards O'Dobry as we say well done there Wojciech nine out of nine number nine there is a hospital okay I've got some interesting ones spread over the years I've got hydrogen taps hotel helicopter landing pad lots of uh, imaginative answers there but number nine is a hospital as Wojciech says so well done there Wojciech I'll get back to the Keen and Kelly Graw and Nora's comment there very soon let's get straight into this driving test report sheet folks this driving test report sheet the Canada did didn't do too bad it did reasonably well if you if you if you know what I mean I'm just going to get straight into what the tester said said to her and what she knows for a fact went wrong okay so hang on there now get my book here to make sure I'm not missing anything okay so here's what happened okay here's what happened listen carefully now so these things don't happen to you the gears she lost four marks on gears there okay here's why she wasn't starting off in first gear she was nervous she was anxious and for various reasons she wasn't confirming that she was in first gear taking off and on quite a few occasions four by the looks of anyway maybe more because you give her a grade one there as well as you can see there's a green mark there a grade one uh, so on four maybe five occasions the poor girl took off in second gear or third gear and the car chugged and struggled and that's where she lost the marks there and the, the failing of the test really comes down to that uh, next the reverse around the corner so it wasn't the worst reverse she didn't lose a mark on observation so she must have been looking around pretty well which shows ability and confidence I suppose but competently she finished too far away okay she didn't fix the gap at the end maybe on the reverse what happens is it's 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 about you know what to do after you straighten up so when you turn the wheel um you're always going to be a little bit wide on the reverse because the front of the car is swinging out and it's that it's that key stage just after the front of the car swings out that some people kind of lose their way they straighten up and they might get a bit confused and they might do a little bit of weaving and all that kind of stuff and this is what kind of, i think happened here she didn't kind of fix the gap properly at the end i always i've i've a video folks i think you should find a link in the description but it's called the quarter steers so at the end of the reverse it's kind of hard to explain in a, in a live stream but at the end of the reverse if you do say this okay just turn it sorry just do that and give the wheel time to react you will find that it will be a lot more responsive and a lot more easier to manage instead of doing this and then this and then this again because you'll end up you know you'll end up swerving and weaving all over the shop if you if you steer too much so sometimes less is more um, check out my video on quarter steers and you'll, you'll see what I mean there so what else did the tester say the hazards the tester said to her actually an important thing here now as she was driving past parked cars and other hazards she was looking in the side mirror too much instead of looking ahead now if you look at the heading up there on that reaction anticipate that's the key that that's the key heading because sometimes you might have a slightly different heading but anticipate is the key word there just above reaction react to hazards there um, so the tester is basically saying that she wasn't anticipating what was ahead she was looking in the side mirrors too much the left side mirror like that maybe checking for distance or something like that and I know I made a video on that a while ago but I, I always say you just have to give a very very kind of quick glance kind of like almost like your peripheral vision because if you look in the side mirrors too much as you're driving along it's going to cost you because you're not you're not looking ahead you have to you have to be planning ahead thinking ahead looking ahead and that's where the key to success lies by planning ahead so tester says too much looking in the side mirrors and it's possible as well that that could be linked to the uh, position as well because if you look at the position on Ben's there there's a there's a mark lost on that so not not saying it was here we're kind of just speculating but if you're looking in the side mirrors too much like that then there's a strong possibility that your position is going to suffer so you may actually be slightly weaving like this because you're not giving your due attention and what's straight ahead so sometimes mistakes can be linked like that it's like I was saying um, a week or two ago um, sometimes marks on reaction to hazards reaction to hazards can be linked as well if you lose a mark on the foot brake because some people if they're not reacting to hazards properly they might end up braking suddenly so sometimes these teeth you, you can kind of 
point to a link between certain marks there. If you're not anticipating a situation and then you subsequently slow down a bit suddenly, you might lose marks on hazards, but you probably might lose them on foot brake as well, so it can be linked as well. Um, position stopping. I see a lot of these actually, a lot of marks on position stopping in the, in the emails that I get as well. So the tester specifically said here, you lost a mark on position stopping here because you hit the curb when you were parking the car to stop. Similarly, if you lose a mark on signal stopping, it's usually they didn't indicate when you were stopping to park. But position stopping here was because she parked incorrectly, hit the curb, uh, didn't line up the curb properly, probably turned the wheel too much, you know, a bit, bit of a sharp turn on the front left wheel and it basically hit the curb. And that's where a mark comes in on position stopping there, folks, okay? And progress then. So the candidate, the driving test candidate said that the tester didn't give her a lot of information on the progress. Now I know, you, I mean, as you probably know, progress is about driving too slow, being too hesitant. She thinks that maybe the progress is linked to the excessive merge X, which could well be. I, I was kind of, I was linking it to position earlier on, but it could equally be linked to progress as well. So because the person was looking in the mirrors too much, the side mirrors as she was passing park cars, she wasn't able to focus on her speed and making good progress. So because she was concentrating too much on the mirrors, overly so, it might have meant she was driving too slow and what was a reasonably good road. So there's, that is not beyond the bounds of possibility, absolutely. Um, so yeah, there, there were the main things anyway. That was a, a quick summary of what the tester said to her and what she feels went wrong. Let's go down through them all now, including the green ones up there as well, okay? So, let me just get a drink here. Okay, so if we if we start at the top there, folks, we have um, rules and checks, okay? So rules and checks are to do with the theory and the road signs, okay? So she got two questions or road signs wrong. Now, it didn't turn into a blue, so that's good. She, she kept it minimum to the minimum, minimum enough. But if you get one question or sign, it's one grade one, two is two, as you can see here, and three or more is only going to be a grade two mark, okay? So it's always, excuse me, it's always important to have a good knowledge of your rules of the road. Make sure you have a good knowledge, get off to a good start. I've plenty of videos, uh, you've got your rules of the road book, you know, you've got apps you can download, but get off to a good start. It kind of gives you a bit of confidence and then the tester's gonna have confidence in you too. So position stopping, we already mentioned there, it was because of uh, she parked incorrectly. So she parked and hit the curb. And that's where the mark on position stopping came in as she was parking on the left. Position on bends, we didn't mention that, but she knows she, she, she admitted she felt out of position on certain bends. So if you have a right bend up ahead, folks, so if, if you're driving and the bend disappears to the right further up ahead, well, then that means you have to think opposite. So if it disappears to the right, you have to keep more to the left then, okay? And that way, you're going to have a better view of oncoming traffic and you're going to increase the distance between you and the oncoming traffic. Because if the bend goes to the right, you don't want to get dragged to the middle of the road. You want to keep more to the left. That's if the bend is wide enough now as well, of course. It all depends on how wide it is. Like if it's a really, really narrow, tight lane, well, you don't really have any choice then. You just you kind of have to stay central anyway. So, But if the bend goes to the right, keep left and if the bend goes to the left then up ahead so if you're driving on a bend and it disappears to the left up ahead then you should stay central okay central in your lane not too much to the left because you could be going into kind of holes or you could be kind of getting a little bit too close to people who might be kind of walking um opposite you especially if there's no footpath so always try and be a little bit central if the bend goes to the left because you'll have a slightly better view of oncoming vehicles and oncoming cyclists and so on by doing that okay so in summary if the bend goes to the right keep a little left if the bend goes to the left keep a little central okay that's position position stopping as I said hitting the car parking reaction to hazards so she says here it was because um, as I mentioned a few moments ago she was looking in her mirrors too much uh, and not focusing on what's ahead again as I said earlier the key word there is anticipate so if you have hazards whether it's roadworks a cyclist a speed bump and it like it could literally be be anything somebody opening a door a, a pedestrian running across the road uh, a child chasing a ball you know you have to be thinking and planning ahead 
don't get overly focused on your mirrors. The mirrors are not the be all and end all on this thing, okay? You need to be planning ahead and thinking ahead. Having said that, if you're changing lanes or overtaking or, or, or you know exiting a roundabout, the mirrors are very important then. But when it comes to driving on straight roads and driving when you have things ahead of you, like 30, 40, 50 meters ahead of you, you have to be thinking ahead. And here the tester said, too much mirrors, not enough forward planning. It might even be linked to the next point there, which is progress on the straight, which is going too slow on the straight. The test candidate from exchanging emails feels that because she was looking in the mirrors too much, it might have affected her progress. She wasn't aware of her speed. Too much attention was going to the side, side mirrors unnecessarily. So she wasn't aware of her speed. She wasn't aware enough of the, the good surroundings that she had. Yes, fair enough, there might have been a hazard there. But if there was a hazard there, it doesn't mean you have to go really, really, really slow. You might still be able to get up to 30 or 40 or even 50. It entirely depends on the road you see. But anyway, progress on the straight is driving too slow on the straight, not going fast enough. Maybe she needed to get up the gears. Maybe she needed to get up to, up to fourth gear and 50 kilometers. Progress at roundabouts and turning left is, is similar to the straight. Too slow, too hesitant. Um, probably, be, probably because it was a test, she was maybe... A little bit indecisive maybe there was an opportunity to go maybe there was an opportunity to pull out on the left turn and she didn't take it because she was worried about other cars and i know i know it can be difficult sometimes to make that judgment but you kind of have to think of sometimes like the physics of the situation so for example if you're at a stop sign turning left like and you're on a little bit of a downhill okay that that should fill you with a little bit of confidence because you you could probably move off a bit quicker and especially if the other cars on your right coming are going up a slight hill so so think about that think about the speed of the other cars do they look like they're picking up speed do they look like they're staying the same um you kind of have to think of all these things and the only way to kind of get that decision making process uh spot on in your head is to get practice and get lots of driving lessons from uh, professional driving instructors that can give you that guidance that you need but if it comes down to making a decision on a roundabout or a left turn and the tester feels you're being too hesitant or too cautious you're going to lose marks so as i said try and think about the hills are they going uphill are you going downhill what way are they indicating if they're on a roundabout do they look like they're exiting the roundabout or are they about to kind of turn the wheel and come across you think about all these things and you know the more practice you get the more confident you'll become at reading other cars body language if that makes sense but anything to do with progress anyway is the person going too slow vehicle controls so as we said here we are reasonably sure that the majority of these are for uh the candidate accidentally taking off in second gear she didn't check that she was in first gear and the car chugged and struggled a little bit moving off but I'm sure if she says that that's that's where the majority of the marks were lost. But just just as, as easily, marks can also get lost here um, when it comes to gears. Uh, and, and it could easily be linked to progress. So if you look up ahead there and you see progress on the straight and progress on roundabouts, for example. So that's the tester saying to her that she was going too slow, either either driving too slow on the, on, on the roundabout or turning left. I mean, sorry, I meant either driving too slow on the left turn or driving too slow on the roundabout, or too slow pulling out, they could easily be linked to gears. So maybe the tester felt you should have given us some juice and gotten up to second gear um, as you were turning, or got up, got to second gear as you're on the roundabout. Because some people think you have to stay in first gear or something like that on the roundabout. Usually the more inexperienced, the more basic learners. But no, you you can you can you can get to second gear just as you enter the roundabout or as you're on the roundabout. Is is it shows good progress? It shows good decisiveness if you do that. So that's gears there. So there's five altogether. So a couple of grade one, uh, one grade one there. So the test was probably just give her a grade one because it was a very minor mark. Like the green ones there, grade ones are minor marks. The blues are more serious, but they're not fatal. And the reds are very serious. So the grade ones don't really matter. The only time the grade ones matter is if you get too many of them. Like for example, up above there, she got two grade ones on rules and checks. So the two marks don't count to towards her fail, but if she had got one more question wrong, it would have counted because that grade two would have or that grade one would have went from two grade ones and it would have uh, evolved into a grade two. So the grade ones don't matter on their own, but if you get too many grade ones, then they are going to turn into grade two. So they are 
they are important, but they're you know if if they're managed if they're managed properly, they 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 don't have to necessarily count to um, a fail. So anyway, the the green is minor, the blue is kind of more serious, but not very serious. If you get nine or more overall, you'll fail. If you get four in the one line, like she got four on um, gears there, that's a fail. And if you get six under one heading, so if you see there, she got three under the heading of progress there on the straight, roundabouts and turning, that's, that. that's, that's three on progress. So if she had got six or more under progress, that on its own would have been a fail as well. And even one red mark is a fail. That's something serious or very serious. Red marks could be like not stopping at a stop sign, getting stuck in the middle of traffic lights, running a red light, driving up on the curb, nearly knocking down a pedestrian, uh, things like that. You know, it would want to be pretty dramatic, all right, to be a to be a red one. Now the reverse around the corner competently. So competently means skill wise, distance from the curb, whatever. Now I know from what she said there that that she lost the mark on the reverse around the corner because she was too far away from the curb at the end okay and that's why the tester marked her there i mentioned at the start here early in the stream about how important clutch control is folks clutch control is so important i really want you to check out my videos on clutch control i have made lots of them on um i've made one there last year on on, on going to first gear um that's kind of the thumbnail is junction made easy i've made them on reversing on creep mount in first gear um and if you have good clutch control so clutch control in specifically with reversing for example so you go into reverse gear you you bring your clutch up a little bit till you feel a little bit of a connection like a little tiny little bite then you let down your handbrake and then you have to move your clutch such in such subtle small tiny ways so the car moves in that same manner the car moves slowly and gently now if you have good clutch control here's the important thing if you have really really good clutch control you can make the reverse so much easier and i genuinely believe that a lot of the competency marks and observation marks are very much linked to clutch control because put it this way if you don't have good clutch control on the reverse or the turnabout you're probably driving a little bit too fast reversing a little bit too fast not under the proper control so therefore you don't have the um, ability to be more observant then because you're concerned about the speed. But if you have really excellent clutch control, it kind of breeds confidence, you know. And then because you're going slow and steady, you then are creating more t more time for yourself to, to look around on the reverse around the corner. And you're also making the reverse kind of last a little bit longer. So it means you're you have more time to get the steering right at the end. Because if you don't have good clutch control, you're probably going to be going a little bit too fast. And therefore, the reverse round the corner could be over before you anticipate, and you don't have time to fix it and get back in, which is what happened here. She didn't. She was too far away from the curb. And I'm not sure if it was a clutch control issue, but she, did, she knows for a fact she finished too far from the curb. Now, I'm suggesting that if you have really, really good clutch control, you can create that time, and that space that you need to do a good reverse around the corner. So it's not always the 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 reason why people lose marks on competency, but I very much believe it's it's linked to a lot of the reasons there. Okay, so in summary, folks, this person failed because of hazards and gears mainly. So she was looking in her mirrors too much with, for the hazards. She was going a little bit slow generally, and she got the gears mixed up too often okay it didn't go to first gear starting off it's not the worst result there's no red marks there's no there's no serious red ones here so if she can get a grip on the gears be a little bit more decisive and not too slow and maybe balance out her mirror use a little bit more she's going to have a great chance of passing next time because realistically there she wasn't really that far away okay so i hope that makes things um a little, little bit clearer. I hope you can learn from that as well. Let's get to some comments and questions here anyway. So I think Keen is next. Keen Hardiman, how's things? And I'm, I'm hanging on a second. I'm just going to get back to Keen's comment there. How's things? Just wanted to say thanks for the tips. Um, you provide in the videos. I recently passed my test. Thanks to you. Uh, thanks to your advice. So thank you. Keen, Mara Darjaros, Gwilge, Mila Fajr wrote. You're very, very welcome, Keen. Thank you very much. Congratulations on passing your test. As I said, 
Um, knowledge is power, folks, and I want to share with you my knowledge to make you a better driver and help you achieve your goals. If you want to make a voluntary donation um, to show your appreciation, you can by giving me a donation by PayPal. That's completely up to you. I'm going to answer your emails, do the live streams, offer you loads of free videos, regardless of who gives it the donations or not. But Keen, you're very, very welcome. Well done on passing. Delighted to hear that and glad I could help you and point you in the right direction. Um, Kelly Gra or Gra, depending on what the, if she's missing a father there. Uh, hey there, my test is Wednesday in Galway and I'll be doing it in an automatic car. Any last minute advice? First of all, Kelly, best of luck to you. Can you hear In Galway. Driving an automatic car is not that different to driving a manual. Look, we're all going to be driving automatic cars in five or ten years anyway with, by the, with all these hybrids and electric cars come on board. But you should still use your handbrake on the hill, okay? Um, the auto, If it has auto hold, that's great. I love the auto hold, but you should still use your handbrake on the hill. I'm going to say to you something that uh, uh, always stuck in my head um, because the person that, when I did my driving instructor exam, I asked um, my examiner about automatic cars now this the person the examiner I asked is now the chief driving examiner of all of Ireland okay so this guy this trust me this guy knows what he's talking about he said to me in, in an automatic car he said what I said it's pretty much the same as driving a driving a manual you should still use your handbrake just because it's automatic doesn't mean the car doesn't have a you know a mind of its own he said be very very aware of the creep so for example at traffic lights Sometimes using the brake on its own is not enough, especially if you're not pressing the brake firmly. Use your handbrake at lights. If you're stopped a long time, definitely on the hill as well. You have to use your handbrake, okay? Automatic cars are notorious for creeping forward. And God forbid if you get hit from behind, which hopefully you won't, but if you do, uh, in an automatic car, you are more likely to be shunted forward because of the forward momentum that is in drive. So if you have your handbrake up, it's safer anyway because remember I'm always trying to promote good safe driving for life not just a driving test now also Kelly I have made a video where I got in touch with a great driving instructor from Dublin called uh, Ian Daly and he gave me some great tips that he tells his learners it, it's one of my more recent videos you'll see it there um, I think it was made in December or something like that and he basically says the same thing so if you're in an automatic you should still use the handbrake at lights if you're stopped a long time um on hills you know you, you, you should wait and drive as well if you're at traffic lights or anything like that um wait in d wait and drive because you can move off quicker then it's like waiting in first gear in a manual car wait and drive um all things like that but even if your instructor is telling you not not to wait and drive it's, it's no big deal like it's not it's not like there's one way of doing it and one way is right one way is wrong but that but that will be the best way um, you can email me anyway if you if you, and i'll send you on that video from ian anyway if you would like me to do that okay well, best luck to you in Galway anyway. Okay, let's see what else we have here, folks. And I'm going to be summarizing things soon. Um, let's see there. So that was Kelly. Nora O'Gorman. Hi, Dan. If you can't turn right and you've moved into the yellow box and the lights change, do you fail your test? Yes, you probably do. But it depends what you mean when you say if you can't um, turn right. You see, there should always be a gap Um to make the right turn just after your light goes goes amber and goes red okay so very often you'll be out of lights okay so excuse me when the light goes green you roll up into the middle and get yourself ready to move off uh, you will have to give way to oncoming cars that are doing less work like cars going straight and cars turning left now your lights are probably going to be mirroring the oncoming cars lights so when your light is green their light is green when your light is amber their light is amber so you kind of have to put yourself in the position of them as well they might be playing their gangster card from their chest pocket and they might be chancing their arm and putting the foot down when they see amber now i'm you you don't do that okay you do not do that but you have to be in the mentality of that now very often when you when when they do that You'll kind of see you'll kind of see them getting building up a bit of a speed. So don't look at the car that's doing the wrong thing. Look look beyond that car. The next car should be staying stopped at the line because he's not chancing his arm and going hopefully anyway. So put your eyes on on that because that will mentally train you then to be aware of the gap that's being created as opposed to the car that's trying to break the red light coming towards you. 
Now, if you have your handbrake up and you're waiting in first gear, okay, you're probably more likely to go quicker. So all these things can help you get in the right mentality of dealing with that situation, okay? I know every each situation is different, and if you genuinely cannot take the right turn because of a oncoming car or some issue, I'm sure the tester will take that into consideration. But to answer your question, sim to ask answer your question simply, if you get stuck in the middle and you don't take the gap that was there, you will fail by getting stranded in the middle of lights. I've seen it happen time and time again. The Vec kill. Kaliarju again, I think. Hi, then. Thanks a lot for answering my questions. Anytime, Vivek, just keep them coming. I'll answer them as, as best I can. Wired or weird question, I think you mean to say, do you know anyone who passed the driving test without any grades? Without, only, like you mean a clean, a clean? Yes, I've had one or two over the years. Um, I remember a chap right back when I started, actually, I think it was. 2008, 2009, yeah. Um, I had, had a young lad. Um, very very good driver. Actually failed failed twice first, but I I think I think he was just I and I and I'm I'm genuinely not a believer in conspiracy theories like. But I think this guy was just there was a might have been a few issues with testers and in Wexford at the time, and I think they were just being unkind to this lad because he was young. Uh, and he when he got a different tester, let's say, um he passed it with a completely clean sheet. So he went from failing like from whatever, 12 or 13 marks to getting the clean sheet. You know, it's kind of like, you know, I mean, am I missing something here? What's going on? But anyway, yeah, I have had one or two all right that, that passed with a clean sheet. Um, I don't necessarily take much or any pleasure from that, to be honest with you, Vivek, because I always think that if you have a few mistakes on your sheet, it's no harm because it can keep you alert and keep you aware of things you need to improve on. Just because... You might have passed on a clean sheet does not absolutely does not mean you're the perfect driver because fair enough you might drive in a town that you know well like wexford or waterford or ennis or something like that you, you know you might know those places really really well but can you drive on the motorways around dublin can you drive you know between belfast and derry you know it's getting a clean sheet is, is, a, is a good achievement it shows you've driven very well but it doesn't mean you're the perfect driver. But it has happened a few times. Yeah, I know others as well. Uh, friends of mine who are instructors, the same thing has happened. Vivek, it was also says I emailed you my report sheet. I appreciate it if you walk me through. Yes, absolutely. I, I, I didn't get that. I, I remember a name like that. I presume you emailed me in the last hour then, I, I'm guessing, because I would have remembered a name like that. I appreciate it if you walk through my report sheet, which I failed first test, not car type, automatic saloon. And also willing to take second test in the same car. Yes, I will give me 12 or 24 hours, Vivek, and I will get back to you on that, okay? And same goes for anyone out there, folks. Daintai at gmail.com if you have any questions or you'd like me to look at your report sheet. But please, 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 when you're, in, when you're emailing me your report sheet, would you please let me know everything the tester said? Where you think you went wrong, why you failed here, why you lost the mark here. Because the more information I have, the better as i said i can learn from your information as well i can learn what it's like from your perspective but remember information is uh, appreciated if you if you can let me know as much information much things that happen in your test as possible so certainly vivek and thanks for emailing i'll get back to you in due course al hi then learning in a 2.2 liter car when taking a turn at slow speed if tight the car is almost about to stall yeah i knew i knew that was gonna i knew you were gonna say that actually and start chugging a bit. Should I put it in first gear or press the clutch in slightly? Listen, if you have a choice there, put it in first gear and then kind of come off the clutch nice and slowly. I would rather you do that than put the clutch in slightly. Because, it well, if you put the clutch in slightly, it'd probably be okay. Because, But if you put the clutch in fully, then you're coasting, you see. But two things on that, okay. It's probably better to go into first gear to stop the chugging. It all depends, like. But... It's probably better to do your car in, or to do your test, sorry, in a small petrol car that is more suited to town driving because big, chunky 2.2 liter diesel, I presume, depending on what, I'm not sure if it's diesel, probably is, is not necessarily suitable to doing a test because you're driving in town, doing mini roundabouts, tight turns. Big 2.2 liters like that are great on the open roads, driving from Dublin to Belfast, brilliant, but maybe not in a town doing your driving test. But... You have to do what you see fit there. Talk to your instructor as well. He or she will point you in the right direction. But I would probably say go into first gear more so there, yeah. Don't want to be caught. Exactly, yeah. You don't want to be caught. That's, that's exactly the point, yeah. But 
in first I'm too slow or I have to slow down too much time. Yeah, I I, I understand what you mean. I've I've seen that a few times. So, um, yeah, it's just it's just the way the cars are. You know, I'd probably be saying there go into first gear and then come very slowly off the clutch because if if you go into first gear taking a turn and then you kind of raise the clutch a bit a bit quick, it's going to cause the car to to jerk and jump. So you don't want that either. Okay, next then Sukjet Kaur, I think. My English is not good. Then it's no problem, sir. I drive well. Yeah, listen, the driving testers are, are very used to people who whose English is not the best or is not their first language, you know. There's loads of people here from different countries, whether it's India or Bangladesh or Pakistan or Poland or Moldova or whatever like that. So they're quite used to it. As long as you can communicate with them uh, to a basic extent, it'll be fine. If it's you, you can have a translator, but like not not during the COVID time. Sorry, you can't. You're not allowed to translate during COVID. But when prior to the COVID restrictions, you could. But you'd be surprised. Once 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 you understand left, right, straight, turn about, reverse, park, you 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 know you'll probably have enough to get by. So good luck to you as well there, Sukjet Kaur. Um, I'm sure your English will be fine. Uh, uh best of luck to you, Josh. Uh, Chuck, Chuck Weezy, I think it is. Hi, then. I have a quick question on the reverse around the corner. On the reverse, if I find myself going close to the curb, how many marks will I lose if I move forward? Uh, if I move forward, then reposition myself. Josh, that's a very good question. I'm glad you mentioned that, actually, because... Okay, so let me just answer you first. How many marks you lose de depends on how the tester sees it, okay? I, I guess I'm probably going to say you'd lose one grade two mark. Um, under competency, just just exactly like this this report sheet here. Sorry, I'm pointing the right way. The, the report sheet there, reverse competency. You see, there's one mark under grade two there. Probably that because you will have probably been marked down for misjudging the corner, and for not straightening up enough or whatever the mistake is. But Josh, I would rather you, okay, realize that mistake, pull forward a little bit, okay. Now listen very carefully what I'm about to say now. Once you pull forward a little bit, but, but before and after you pull forward, make sure you do this. See that? Look around, okay? Whenever you change directions on the reverse, whether you go from forward to reverse or reverse to forward, you have got to make sure you check all around you, okay? It could be the difference between losing a grade 2 mark and losing a grade 1 mark, okay? So if you have to move forward, okay, that's fine. Just make sure you check around you before you move forward. And then before you move back, same thing again and fix the mistake. I would much rather you fix the mistake um, instead of hitting the curb and highlighting the mistake more. So it's a very good question, Josh. I hope you understand what I said there and the best luck to you with the test. Noah Thomas Nianku, I remember that before. How are you, Noah? Um, hi, Dan, what are your thoughts on <laughs> modified cars? Don't have that many thoughts on it, to be honest, Noah. Um, I would say if you mean like loud exhausts and all kinds of other things i'd say if people are into that and they like doing up their cars as as far as i'm concerned more power to them because if that's how they express their creativity and they uh, like a, it's probably like a hobby to them i'd say go for it everybody's unique everybody deserves respect and if they if they uh can Kind of enjoy themselves by modifying their cars i say go for it and enjoy it um but i'm not sure if you mean doing the test in the modified car now is that what you mean let me see is there any other comment down there from you no okay um it all depends on how modified it is like you know you i mean you don't really want to be turning up to a test with a loud exhaust and you know all kinds of uh gear attached to your car and all that you know you're better off turning up to a test in a nice modest uh petrol car like you know it all if it's just a slight bit of modification it'll be fine but um maybe not too excessive okay folks so i have a good few comments there to get through i'm going to try to get through get through them now as i get on the home straight here and then i'll be having a summary and i'll be going through just briefly through the few announcements again there and we'll see how it is but if you have any com any questions get get them in there or if i'm offline just by the time you see this, I might be offline later on or tomorrow, or whatever. Email me, daintai at gmail.com if you have any questions or if you would like me to review your driving test report sheet, okay? 
So let's get to the comments here again then. Um, Sai Stories, can we go on bigger roundabouts in third gear? Um, if it's a big roundabout and can I see clear, if I can see it's clear? Yes, Sai, good question as well. Very good question. You can absolutely do the roundabout in third gear, okay? 100%, absolutely. But as long as it's a big wide roundabout, as long as you see that it's clear and as long as the car doesn't struggle, if all them things line up, yes, you can do the roundabout in third gear if it's a bigger wider roundabout and it's, if it's safe to do so yes absolutely um brian m says yes to say yes absolutely brian m yep uh vivek uh how should i react in roundabout during heavy traffic and um, vivek also says if i intend uh, intend i think he means to take right in a big two-lane roundabout but i see a few cars stopped in the middle of the roundabout but there is a gap. Can I go to join the queue without affecting oncoming traffic? Who wants to go straight? Yes, Vivek, another good question. You can you can proceed forward as long as you keep some kind of a corridor free in the just in the area that you would have joined the roundabout, you know. So you can certainly proceed onto the roundabout, but try your best to keep the 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 center circle, if you know what I mean, free. So you don't block anybody and that's just a courtesy thing because there is a mark on the driving test for a courtesy so if you can do that yeah you have to judge it based on what you see on the bigger roundabouts you might have a bit more flexibility there but yeah try and keep a little bit of a corridor free at the entry as well and um, for a good approach as you say there yeah novice ba hi dan big fan been watching your channel for over a year that's great novice thank you i took a couple of tests while i was living in dundalk and failed recently moved to wexford so wexford well there you go you're probably not too far from me then as it's all new road conditions for me any advice driving around wexford especially which roads are 60 plus or 60 versus 50 yes indeed wexford is a <clears throat> i won't lie to you wexford is a tricky enough town to drive in there's lots of narrow streets especially around the center near white's hotel clayton white's hotel and near Selsker and then by Duns and places like that. Um, I would say if you are familiar with the area around Redmond Square, Duns, um, Selsker, Clayton White's Hotel, the library, all that kind of stuff there, they're tricky roads. If you can manage them, you can manage anything. Um, keep an eye on the signs. Some, sometimes it's 50, sometimes it's 60. The test centre in Wexford is actually 60, believe it or not. And then it goes, it goes down to 50 as you get closer to the town. Uh, practice is, is the key thing there novice if you i don't really do the lessons anymore i i do do lessons but only to a select few as i'm focusing on other things if you want to if you're looking for some lessons i can certainly point some good instructors in wexford your way um but listen it's all about practice it's all about being familiar and being practiced i would be confident in your ability because you're 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 obviously clear you've obviously built up some experience from driving in dundalk so you have a kind of a wider array of experience than other people have so i would consider that a very much a positive uh practice is key um make sure you're comfortable at uh you know creeping out in first gear certain quite a few junctions in way i think it's, it's not just wexford all, all towns like this that require you to kind of edge out and creep out in first gear uh so the best look to you anyway my email is there if you want to if you would like to email me uh jennifer Aw 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 Thanks for the clarification. I appreciate it. You're very welcome, Jennifer. Um, name these signs. What? Uh, Q Q Sol X. I will name those signs right now. Q Sol X. If I'm saying that correctly. So, sorry. Let me get a comments. I'm just losing my comments there a second. Here we go. Okay. So the signs, folks. For anybody that doesn't know, okay. Number one is no entry. Okay. No entry for cars. Number two is a dead end. So there's no true road. Dead end. Number three is a dangerous bend ahead to the right. Number four is a roadwork sign, two-way traffic. Number five is a clear way, so that's no parking or stopping. Number six, road narrows from both sides. Number seven, dangerous corner ahead. Number eight is keep to the left, okay? And number nine is a hospital sign. So hope that helps you there, Q Solex. Jennifer Awa, if I'm saying that correctly, when stopping in traffic on the hills, do I need to use the handbrake? Absolutely, Jennifer. Uh, I presume you mean on the uphill. Yep. You need to use the handbrake then because if you don't now if your car has some kind of auto hold or some you know the way the modern cars have the auto hold and the, they'll hold automatically you may not need to use it then like if you have the auto hold switched on but if it's a traditional car yes use the handbrake so i'll talk you through okay so you're on a hill okay you're coming to, coming to the hill say a traffic light or something like that so you brake first then clutch in 
handbrake first, always handbrake first, and then first gear. Now you could wait in neutral if you're really far back in the queue, but I, I usually say wait in first gear if you're at or near the top of the queue, so you're ready to move off quicker. And then bring your right foot from the brake over to the accelerator. Now I don't mean press the accelerator, I mean just be ready over the accelerator with your heel on the ground, okay? So you're waiting in first gear, clutch in, waiting in first gear, heel over the accelerator, ready to go. And if you want to have your hand resting on the handbrake, that's fine, there's no problem with that as well. Um, that's what I would do there. Just for safety, just for security, use the handbrake on the hill, yeah. You may not need to use it on the downhill now because you've got gravity on your side. Uh, Clemney, Clem, uh, sorry, Keemney, such a, a great array of names here. Hi everyone, is there any way I can check dates available for the theory test? Because I'm planning to work, to book, sorry, the theory test next week and I'm not sure how long I'm going to wait for my test. I'm personally, Kimi, I'm not sure because I, I don't really go into the booking system there too often. The last time I did, you, you could check, you could pick your date. But as I said, the waiting list is pretty high now and they are kind of working their way through it. They are increasing capacity for the theory test. But the best way to find out is just to kind of look on the website, check out the website and see how you get on. If anybody else wants to shed more light on that, then please do um, in the comment section. Uh, Al says thanks for the videos by the way you're very welcome Al uh, thanks for tuning in best wishes to you Liam T what are they what are they doing to clear the backlogs well there's another good question Liam T I'll tell you what they're doing now Liam they're taking on 40 new testers that are starting right now in this month they're taking on another 40 well in principle they have the permission to take on another 40 in principle for later on in the summer they are going to be working later and working on Saturdays and the summer is a good time to clear the backlog because of the longer evenings. The brighter, longer evenings means more tests can take place. So that's pretty much what they're doing in a nutshell. Um, there is quite a backlog, but I'm pretty sure it'll it'll get done. The RSA would like to get it down to 12 weeks by the end of the year. Whether that's a little optimistic or not, I don't know, but I think they'll definitely make progress by the end of the year. Absolutely. Um, let's see. Estelin, notice myself uh, compensate for poor clutch control while with coasting what would be a solid way to break the habit well as doctor now says in my 600 pound life don't do it uh you need to watch my video on clutch control okay uh, and on coasting if you coast too much you're giving the car forward momentum which is very dangerous and very undesirable on a downhill you're basically giving the car extra power on the downhill it looks like you need to go to a car park and practice clutch control and get very very comfortable with it because clutch control is so so important for parking creeping out of the blind junction um reversing around the corner doing a turnabout and it sounds like you just need to kind of make a key difference there between the both try not to get clutch control and coasting kind of confabulated together they're very different things they're related but they're very very different okay clutch control is a good thing Coasting is not always a good thing. It can be a good thing at certain times, but it's not always a good thing, especially if you're on the downhill. So, solid way to break the habit. Watch my videos on it. If you want me to point you to the right emails, I, I can't really do it here on the live stream, but if you want me to point you to the emails, email me daintai at gmail.com. Tell me what your issue is, because I'm probably not going to remember the name. Uh, that's one way. Practice is another way. Uh, proper driving lessons is the other way, okay? Kelly Grod gur Mila Mahagut, Kelly Grod ta Mila Falcher Road, August Beak La Jasagut. I'll continue to watch your fantastic videos till the day of the test. Well, thank you very much, Kelly, and email me there if you have any questions. And the best of luck to you in the driving, in the learning, in the test, whatever it is you're doing. Test, sorry. Gunari Lesson Scrudo. Um, Ingrid Lynn Santos, thanks a million, Dan. I've been watching your videos for a while now as I'm planning to do my test in the following months. Your content is incredible. Thank you very much, Ingrid. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, and the best of luck to you with your test. Always remember, it's a journey, not a destination, okay? The whole learning to drive thing, it's a journey. Even when you pass the test, it doesn't mean you're the be all and end all because then there's motorways. Then there's driving in Europe, then there's driving in America. You know, there's all kinds. There's, well, no matter how good you are, there's always more you can learn, okay? And the same goes for me. But best luck to you, Ingrid. Uh, delighted to hear you find the videos good. Uh, Fun Masty, that name rings a bell again. Hi, Dan. Hello, Fun Masty. Um, you have a comment for her, Dan, which I'll get to now. Uh, John Pengen anniversary return. Uh, the driving system in Ireland is professional and is well run and is great thanks for that john very nice comment there 
SN then I have an auto handbrake and normal option normal option sorry I got my test and I'm wondering is there a preference for the test no there's it's not that there's a preference you have auto hold which is great you can certainly use that I mean the the technology on the car should be embraced um, it's 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 good you know more technology is great like for example if your car has a reversing camera that's brilliant just don't look in the reversing camera all the time don't depend on it fully but it can certainly help you just like this auto hold thing can um, so I would say use the auto hold um, it depends on on the car because th th there is different variations of the auto hold but I would still be using the the normal handbrake on the hills anyway and at lights because you can have the auto hold switched on but sometimes that it can be a bit tricky to creep out at junctions with that on it does depend on the car like you know sorry one sec it does depend on the car some like i was giving lessons to a person a fellow there and, and when he had the auto hold on he found it a little bit tricky to creep out of the blind junction when he'd raise the clutch to creep out he'd find that sometimes the car would kind of just creep that little bit too far whereas when he did it with the with the regular handbrake it was much easier and i i strongly recommended him to use the regular handbrake listen i i need to be in the car with you i need to see how, how the auto hold reacts to creeping out i need to see what the regular handbrake is like before i'd answer that question um there fun masty but there is a bit of flexibility there i would just advise you to talk to your instructor there and ask him or her to give you some advice on that because it does depend on the car but just to some just to be clear the, the technology is good and generally speaking the technology in a car should be embraced for the driving test shane grant four months for a theory test my goodness yeah well they weren't doing any theory tests up until recently shane so um it depends what you mean by four maybe you're talking about before covid um but as i said the the, the waiting list for the theory test is quite long i think there's one hundred and twenty thousand now but there there is a big increase in capacity going on and that will come down over the summer folks any last minute tips for the test super nervous don't forget to breed get some lessons get a lesson before the test and always remember this and a lot of time the vast 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 majority of times in life most of the things you worry about don't actually happen okay so best of luck to usn um if you don't drive too slow you'll be okay if you keep the head moving at junctions and don't forget the blind spot moving off okay and on the blind spot it's one thing getting it but you might need to refresh it as well if it takes you a bit longer to move off that is okay folks last couple of comments here then uh let's see clemmy kimi if i'm saying it right damn that's a long time waiting yeah long enough um for the theory test there four months damien fenton thanks for replying to my email recently oh yes damien about going straight from straight and left you're very welcome damien same for anybody else email me if you have any questions on driving or you'd like me to review your driving test report sheet danetai at gmail.com but please give me some information on what happened in the test when you're emailing me the report sheet last comment probably brian brian McHugh, sn thank you very much you're very welcome sn best wishes to you any questions you know where i am what's the story from brian McHugh? what's the story with the marks for the gears is that coasting or being in the wrong gear for the speed you're doing? If you're talking about this driving test report sheet, Brian, you're you're, I've just, you're probably just coming in a little later later. So in the in this specific case, Brian, the marks for gears are because in the majority of the cases, the girl took off in the wrong gear. So instead of going into first gear, she took off accidentally in second gear. She said she was kind of anxious and nervous, and it was kind of one of those things that she was worried about beforehand. I think also with this report sheet, I suspect, although she didn't say so, but I suspect that the gears are possibly related to progress because I would say sometimes that, that, that there is a big link between that there. If you're not going fast enough, it might mean that, you know, the tester would rather you get up to third gear or get up to fourth gear on the straight or or, or, or even get second gear on the roundabouts maybe. So, but in this case, it, it, was, it was due to not taking off in first gear uh, for most of the cases here. SN, thank you. Yeah, I think I said that. Uh, thank you so much, Fun Masty. You're very welcome, Fun Masty. Wojciech, Jing Dobre. When I was listening to Kevin's podcast with you, I noticed a mistake in Poland. The basic training consists of 30 hours of theory and 30 hours of practical, not 25. Ah, yes, I wasn't sure about that myself. Yeah, and I think you'd mentioned that before, Wojciech. Yeah, so thanks for thank you for clarifying that. Uh, that's quite a, quite a good uh, quite a good number of theory there and quite a good number of lessons in Poland there. Yeah, so. Thank you for that, Wojciech, and best wishes to you. Me way good, and yeah. Okay, folks, just going to summarize a few things here now before you go. Okay, so summary of the announcements I made at the start. Okay, 
So, full US license. You don't have to do the 12 lessons or for the majority of full licenses. Uh, Liam T, you're very welcome. Thanks, Liam. Um, you can do the reduced EDT. Uh, you, don't, you have to do the theory test, though, if you're doing that. And you don't have to wait six months if you have a full license from another country. That's not part of a mutual recognition agreement. If your learner permit goes out of date by five years, you will have to start over, okay? Um, Blonid, what a great name, Blonid. Will I fail if I don't overtake someone, for example, a tractor when there's room to do so? I always get nervous when moving out to do so. It's not that you'll fail, but you could lose marks, yeah. It all depends there, Blonid, on how how um how much space you have like and if you delay too long but do you you are risking a mark though absolutely you, you are going to risk getting marked down if you don't overtake it because it could be under progress like you see progress on this sheet here so in your case it could be progress overtaking so it all depends on the on the situation uh i'll definitely do my donut oh, Vic, thank you very much for any support much much appreciated and thank you for tuning in um, back to you now, 120,000 on the theory waiting list, that's going to come down due to increased capacity, 62,000 waiting for a driving test, that will come down by the end of the year, hopefully it'll get down to 12 weeks by the end of the year, extra testers are being employed, and the longer summer evenings will make more tests happen throughout the summer months, okay? If you want to book your driving test, do so on myroadsafety.ie, you can access that through the RSA website. If you'd like to have any questions answered about your driving licensing or booking uh, your slot for the obtaining your permit or obtaining full license, do so by ndls.ie, www.theorytest.ie for any bookings for the theory test. They're hoping to get the waiting list down there as well, as I mentioned. Um, if you drive unaccompanied, uh, you are looking at an €80 euro fine and two penalty points that could increase to 120 euro fine and four penalty points if you do, if you contest it or if you don't pay after 28 days so you're also at risk of having your car seized if you drive on a company okay so be warned folks um okay so quick summary of the driving test report sheet here brian McHugh, any problem adjusting side mirrors doing the reverse from the corner as long as you remember to adjust them no problem brian as long as you remember to adjust them back okay i don't recommend it because i think it might kind of increase blind spots i know it gives you a better view of the curb well listen brian if you want to do that no problem just remember to fix them back up though as well won't you and the best look to you brian McHugh. um the tester about this report sheet here what did the tester say um not starting off in first gear too far away from the reverse at the end looking in the mirrors too much overtaking hazards instead of looking ahead position stopping she hit the car parking progress going too slow possibly linked to the excessive mirror checks okay um, the road signs again here, number one is no entry, number two, dead end, number three, dangerous bend ahead, number four, two-way street, number five, clearway, number six, road narrows both sides, number seven, dangerous corner, number eight, keep left, number nine is a hospital sign. Um, Vivek, also wish you all the best, lad. Yes, a good good wishes there from Vivek, thank you very much. Um, Brian, sound best wishes to you, Brian. If you would like to make a voluntary donation, you can do so by PayPal. Links will be in the description and in the first pinned comment. And I just want to say a very big thank you to anybody out there who has commented, who sent me emails, who sent good wishes, and who sent any donations by PayPal. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, I'd like to say good luck to anybody who's learning to drive. Best of luck to anybody doing a driving test. My details are there. Email me if you have any questions or if you'd like me to review your report sheet. And I hope you have a great Sunday. Thanks for joining me today, folks. And I hope to be back next week as well for another live stream. I'll let you know in advance. So all the best and good luck with the driving and stay safe. Thank you.